Welcome back to JB Reviews. I have a 2024 Chevy Silverado gas and diesel. Now, if you don't know, for 2024, things got really interesting for GM. For the gasoline, they did put the 10-speed Allison behind it. For the diesel, it got more horsepower and torque, and they did some adjustments to the combustion and the turbo. So, the question I now have to ask is, which one is the better buy? Because, listen, in the past, I was never a huge fan of the gas offering because it did have the six speed, which was still a reliable option. However, I feel like they were still down on horsepower and you know, you can't do any lower gearing out back. But with this having that 10 speed Allison, that should be the game changer. But I'm gonna answer the question, which truck is a better buy for you? Let's get started. Be sure to check out Jerry Signer Chevrolet in Salt Lake City. They did allow me to do this test with their Duramax Silverado HD and they do have quite a few in stock. In the past, diesels have been the leader when it came down to just sheer power, fuel efficiency, and longevity. Like there's examples of diesel engines going four to 500,000 miles. And that's under load, that's towing, and sometimes in some cases not even being turned off for days at a time. However, today's diesels have been neutered by our government. So now they have EGR, DPF, SCR, DEF. So now this option has become a question in people's minds, especially if you need to idle or drive in a city often, which has made the gas engine a lot more popular because you don't have as much emission stuff on this truck. Now, this has 401 horsepower, 464 pound-feet of torque. It's also gonna weigh less to a comparable truck. Now, this is a high country, so I have a lot of options on this truck. That's gonna affect the curb weight, obviously. I'll show that to you guys in a second. But as far as the power goes, how does that power translate for your towing capacity? Let's take a look. So, as you guys can see here, my truck has a gross fuel weight rating of 11,550 pounds. The axle up front is 4,800 pounds, the rear is 7,250. Now, as far as the towing capacity goes, if you're towing a conventional trailer, this truck has a max tow of 16,000 pounds. And if you're looking at a gooseneck or fifth wheel, 18,300 pounds is where you should max out at. Now, payload's gonna be 3,800 pounds. If you don't know this, Payload is way more important than towing capacity because most people do not tow this big of a trailer. And you're gonna run out of payload before you reach any of these towing capacities. That's just fact. So this truck has a 3,800 pound payload. And for the most part, you're gonna always have more capacity for payload on a gas truck. Now, when we talk about diesel, everyone knows this. Diesels have so much torque. They could probably move this building if they wanted to. This truck has 470 horsepower, 975 pound-feet of torque, but it doesn't just stop there. This truck has a turbocharger, and that's gonna be where most of that power is coming from. So one thing I love about diesels is you have that forced induction that allows this truck to make more power versus a gas engine. Now, obviously, you can twin turbo or turbocharge your gas engine, but you won't be in warranty, number one, but number two, it's not gonna be as reliable. Diesel engines are just built stronger, and diesel fuel is just more efficient than gas. So when it comes down to just sheer power, this is gonna be the engine that you're gonna to have to buy. And the tow numbers speak for themselves. So as far as the gross fuel weight rating goes, they do increase this number because the diesel is so heavy. So 11,550 versus 12,1 for gross fuel weight rating. And this truck does have higher gross combined weight rating, 30,000 pounds. And then look at the towing capacity, 20,000 for conventional, 21.6 for gooseneck and fifth wheel. Now this truck is a lower trim level, so it's gonna have more payload, but if I were to have a diesel high country option just like mine, this number would probably be probably in that 3,600 pound range, because I actually did a video on a 2023, and that truck is definitely lighter than the 2024. So that's something you have to consider is, you're gonna have a little bit less payload, not by much, but it's gonna be a little bit lower, but you still have the power that you need. Now, why is that power important? 
Let's talk about that for a second. Even though a lot of people are really starting to give gas HDs a second and third look, something you have to consider is where you live at. Now, two things come to mind. Number one, I live in Utah and we are pretty high above sea level. And every thousand feet you go above uh, sea level, you lose about 3% of your power. So obviously I think I'm like three or 4,000 feet above. So figure that out. And if you're looking at a gas truck, you could feel that potential power loss. Add to that, having a diesel, you have that turbo. So that turbo is gonna pretty much offset that power loss in my opinion, because coming from Maryland to here, I don't really notice a difference with the diesels. Now with the gas truck, I haven't really done a lot of videos on it, but it has felt a little sluggish. So anytime I've driven a naturally aspirated vehicle, like my wife's Wagoneer, for example, it feels sluggish. And so if I were to drive that back east, it probably would feel faster on the roads. Keep in mind, grades. There's a lot of grades out here in Utah. And so that's going to also be something you have to consider. So I did a video on my gas truck saying that it could be a bad purchase for some people if you're not looking to buy premium fuel for that setup. I feel as though I have to address this because some of you guys did not hear what I said. Let me remind you, I live in Utah. Let me explain. Regular fuel in Utah is 85. The owner's manual says not to use anything less than 87. That was the point I was making. I was not telling you not to put 87 in your truck. I was however saying use 88 or 89 or 93 if you're towing heavy. I get that the compression was lowered to use the 87 octane, but you have to understand something. Manufacturers sell trucks. You think that GM is going to say that you have to use 93 for this truck? Who's going to buy it? They do recommend that you use a higher octane. I get the compression aspect of it. The LT1 has a higher compression than this engine. They lowered it for a reason. I get that. But that's for sales. Understand something. If you're towing 12,000 pounds up a grade, this engine is screaming. Have you never towed with a gas truck before? Most of you guys probably have not who are in the comment section being combative. I get the fact that you guys aren't hearing what I'm saying. I'm just telling you the facts. The fact is, here's the fact. Number one, you are not supposed to use 85 in your truck. So if you don't have an 87, you can't use 85, which means you have to go to a mid-grade, which is premium. And of course, 91 is premium too. Those are both premium fuels in my opinion. And look, diesel is 397, right? Even regular fuel is more expensive than diesel. So my point to this video and the other video is this, don't buy this truck to save money. That was my point. And again, you still have ethanol free fuel, which is kind of expensive too. It's still cheaper than premium, but that is an option to have if you plan on keeping your car a long time. That's all I was saying in the video that I did. And again, if you don't watch all my videos, you don't understand probably anything I say because I do not put every single statement I make in every single video. But in closing, I live in Utah. There's no 87 octane here. There might be some in some places, but you typically see 85. I would not put that in this truck. Last thing I'll mention is if you get a 3500 diesel, you do get a 12 inch ring gear out back versus a 11 and a half that you get on a gas 3500 HD. So just keep that in mind too. So here's where the gas engine is gonna be the winner for you. If you do a lot of city driving, as I've mentioned earlier, diesels do not do well in the city, especially for long term. So if you own a diesel, and you drive a lot in the city, you're gonna to have to get on the highway and get that engine and that DPF hot. If you don't know what DPF is, it's diesel particulate filter. It gets filled with soot and you have to either get the truck into a region while you're driving for about 45 minutes or you have to take it to the dealership and let them do a manual region. It's very frustrating and if you allow it to happen too much, you could have to replace the DPF and it's not cheap. And I don't think that's covered under warranty either, so you have to keep that in mind. So gas engines are slightly better for city driving. Idling, although I don't recommend you idle this truck too much, maintenance is another thing. Now starting off, let's start with DEF. I don't think DEF is a expensive cost. I think it's just an added cost. I can go probably 5,000 miles on a GM product because they have a pretty big DEF tank. 
It's like seven gallons. And you can probably go like 5,000 miles on a tank of DEF if you're not towing. Now, if you're towing, you can probably go about 1,200 to 1,500 miles before you have to fill that tank back up. And that's assuming you're not climbing grades because in some cases, if you're going up grades, you could burn more DEF because of that too. Now, something else you have to consider is fuel filters. Fuel filters on GMs are not as expensive as Ram and Ford because they only have one. So I think a dealership will charge like $300 to change it. Although I recommend you just do it yourself because it's like a $30 to $40 filter and it's really easy to change. But again, it's just time that you have to spend doing that. Another thing is you have to understand that the oil changes are gonna be a little bit more money because it takes more oil in a diesel. Now you should go a little bit further on the oil change compared to the gas, but nevertheless, it's still gonna be more expensive in the long run. You also have to consider diesels are heavier so they do run through tires a little bit quicker versus a gas truck so the front ends you saw that the axle ratio up front on this gas truck was 48 versus 5200 pounds so you have to keep these tires rotated 100 percent now anything else i forget about the cost of a diesel you can put it in the comment section but i think that's pretty much everything that i can think of right now um i do know that there's like a filter on the rams that you have to change i don't think that you have that same filter on the chevys you have to do it like every 75,000 miles. It's kind of time consuming. I've never had to do it because I haven't gotten that high up in miles yet on a Ram, but it is an added cost for them. So in closing, my truck is 84,395. It has a gas engine, right? If I did get a diesel option, it's like 9,500 bucks. It would be $93,895, basically 94 grand, right? So in that case, that's something that you have to consider. I think that even though the diesel does cost more up front, if you drive 50,000 miles a year, I would 100% get a diesel because resale value on a high mileage diesel is a lot better than on a gas truck. That's kind of why I bought this truck in the first place is I don't probably plan on keeping it that long. I'll probably keep it for maybe a year. It just depends on how much I like it. But for the most part, you know, the 10 speed Allison will probably make this truck more valuable in the long run because it has that nameplate behind it. And of course, the 6.6 has been pretty reliable. I love GMs because obviously there's no, uh, what is it called, dynamic fuel management where it deactivates the cylinders. There's no stop start functions on it. So that's the good thing about this setup here. But I hope you guys liked the video. Special shout out to Jerry Siner. They did sell me my truck and this truck here is available. In the next one I do, we're gonna do an MPG and acceleration test. We're gonna see if there's any differences for the diesel versus the gas. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, lock in. See you guys soon.